Hello everyone and welcome to another leak game in season 8 and this time we have our first look into division 2 as we have at hand a game out of group C Harry Drummel versus Colonel Koenig on Haroshaye and we have some really interesting divisions ahead because both of these, divi these divisions are divisions I would have expected to be banned, but they both somehow made it through. As on the one hand, on the left side, for uh, Fari Grommel, we have the lovely first Pichotti to do the Kosjurts, and on the right side, we have Task Force 45. But the incomes are interesting. As Paul Rommel plays Vanguard and Colonel Koenig plays V for Victory. So, a lot of hot things coming in here. And yeah, let's have a wild ride together <laughs> with these guys in game number one on Haroshaye. Universal Carriers coming in, Trujnias coming in, PTRS coming in. In the north, some Engineers and Converted Gunners joining as well. West Converted Gunners still pretty good. A bit lower in availability now. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm still really solid infantry as well. Not so good if you lose them in transport though, as they have DP and SVTs. Couple of T-34s coming up versus T-70s and M5 stewards on the other side. And it looks like we will have an infantry fight in the south as well. We have some Dejan Jolgovis, some Mitojas Ognia, some flamethrowers against some engineers, converted gunners and ammo and pioneers couple of anti-tank guns to stop anything rushing down the road in the south. But a lot more reinforcements actually coming in for the south. Colonel Koenig doesn't want to give up that flag that currently allows Faradormal to get 13-11. In a phase, both are pretty much on par when it comes to income. That's the strength of v victory in this matchup. Though you're dropping off heavily in b phase, where then Vanguard, that usually starts to lose out in b phase, actually only gets its advantage. Um, its real advantage. T 70 here, retreating. Ajni Alkani getting hit by the T-70. T-70 wants to go, go on to 1750 meter range against the T-34s, as below that it can easily be penetrated by the T-34. Above that, obviously, the T-34s can't retaliate, so you kind of want to have long range engagements with these tank destroyers. And they have the speed to increase range rapidly as well. Still a bit too close though here now. Still, yeah want to go further away here as Colonel Koenig, as more and more light armor comes in for Farid Rommel. BA tents now quite a bit stronger against infantry, as they have two DTs, which got buffed lately. So, one of the reasons why, in my eyes, the first Polish is a really strong division at the moment. Meanwhile, in first AA, A gun already comes in here, the first 90mm for Colonel Koenig. Helpful both against the tanks, but especially more so against the masses of IL-2s that can be hurled at you from the first Polish. 80 and 100 point IL-2s with heavy bombs, some cluster bombers as well, that all can hurt you pretty badly. SU-57s coming in to complement the light armor push here, with the Universal Carriers BA-10 and SU-57s. And yeah, this is an interesting matchup here. I, I look, as I said, I'm surprised that both of these divisions made it through banning somehow. And I'm also really interested in the income matchup, how this will behave. Faradom already pretty deep here in the lines of Colonel Koenig. Colonel Koenig's converted gunners spread far and wide at the T-70 falls now as well. Couple scouts at least use their bazookas to stop one of the universal carriers. But the light armor push here is pretty strong. And most of the bazooka units only come in on B phase for Colonel Koenig. You have no access to Nisei rifles in A phase, you only have the cavalry scouts there. So the normal infantry can't defend itself against light armor too too well. So the idea with the universal carriers and co is a pretty strong one in my eyes. M2 now hitting the Po2. Po2 will have a rough time here. Needs to get the hell out. But it allows ground targets to maybe hit the M2 in the same time. So what we have here is what is that actually? What is firing? Is it... Oh, the leader. Right, it's the sniper leader. Didn't have a firing symbol above it though. Meanwhile, M2 now hitting a PO2 in the south as well. Some recon planes here. 
getting hit pretty hard. And the M2 has a good fire rate, so... Yeah, Recon Plane goes down there 2 to 50 cal in the end. But, the Sarpeggi rocks hold really well in the forest in the south. Engineers got the TNT off there though. So, the, the first Sarpeggi rocks there in trouble, get surrendered, not in range of the leader in the rear. But, Colonel Koenig not able to push back in, and it's in 16-8 already. In the face where Colonel Koenig should be able to still easily hold against this. So, this is not a good... This is not looking promising for Colonel Koenig later on. Ojni Alkani also coming in north. T-34E has penetrated the front line there as well. Shaperi rocks and Ojni Alkani pushing through the forest here. And the 16-8 does hurt for Colonel Koenig. Cavalry scouts though, getting another bazooka shot off. Really important unit here. Gets another T-34E killed off. And the first German has arrived. But the A1 has a bad matchup against the T-34E. Normal Sherman, like... German A3s and A5s with 100 frontal armor have a pretty good matchup against T-34Es because their gun has slightly better drop-off rates than the T-34 horse gun but with 10 less frontal armor that's not the case anymore so you have to be careful around them you still have a slightly better rate of fire and you have slightly better accuracy so it's not completely horrible but penetration wise the T-34 is in a slight advantage Po 2 goes down, another Sherman arrives in the north, some more converted gunners arrive, uh, attack around here. Sapphire Rocks not getting in range for the flamethrower, so the converted gunners will win this duel. Ashnel Kani holding the line behind it though, will be pretty capable as well. Strolky LKM coming in, both sides having really good infantry options, like Strolky LKM, Sapphire Rocks, Ashnel Kani, all really good infantry. On the other side, similar with the converted gunners and later on the Nisais. Converted Gunners, both the US and the UK versions, pretty useful tools. Converted Gunner US a bit more capable in killing things. Converted Gunner UK a bit more capable in being a meat shield. For 15 points, a 15 hit point unit is quite insane. M8 and Stuart try to hold on against some T70s here, but T70s keep the pressure up. Engineer leader, leader under pressure, the forest fight here, still going relatively well for Farid Rommel, not eating too too much TNT just yet. Though both Saperi rocks by now have gone down, but a lot of infantry and now also the armor of Colonel Koenig here has been killed off. Bomber not quite on point. And the 16-8 is still ticking, and that's the really crucial part of this at the moment. You can't allow a 16-8 to continue. You need to do a counter push here whilst you still have a decent income as Colonel Koenig, but that won't be easy. Otherwise, you won't make it into C phase. And you need C-Face to really get back into this game as V for victory. Pretty tough matchup here right now. Oh, pretty tough task ahead of Colonel Koenig now. Super strong push. The light armor usage, wise choice. You don't really want the infantry fights. Like, you have good infantry as the first Polish. But the light armor is the advantage. And that was used well. The On, on the other hand, Colonel Koenig could have used the M2s and so on a bit better maybe as well. Use the range advantage of those vehicles a bit better. I like the 90mm, that's a good addition to the team. But it yeah, doesn't seem to be quite good enough. Sherman in the north though is pretty helpful. And by now the, the amount of tanks in the town has been decimated. But Marginal Khanis and Co. are in a relatively good defensive position. And in, from defensive positions out they beat the converted gunners pretty easily as well. As the Convert Gunners are good at the mid-ranges, so if you push into them, they will decimate you. But they can't really push into 3 DPs or 2 DPs and some SVTs or some Maxims st standing around. Especially as they're disheartened, so they will fall back automatically pretty early as well. And then... So, T-34 coming in, in the south as well. Armor advantage here, still full fabric normal. Koenig Koenig, maybe a bit over-investing in here. I feel like he sh maybe the better idea would have been giving up this town and bring the or this forest and bring the reinforcements that were sent here into the center. But by now that's too late to change. So you gotta get the best out of it. Cavalry scouts at least get one kill there onto one T70. Mortar half track is around as well. But 168 is ticking. Northern flank also <laughs> won by Farid Rommel, beating all the tanks of Colonel Koenig heavily there. 
like nearly no losses there for Fabry Drommel. All the Stuarts and Shermans killed off for Colonel Koenig. And Colonel Koenig is in a pretty bad position now. We are about to hit B phase, where the income of Colonel Koenig will tank. 52 P's are around. M4A1 is coming in from the rear. Motor halfback trying its best around here. Trying to hit the Ogenias and the Dejan Jolgovis. The sniper leader over here gets hit. Motor halfback is doing a good job, but maybe not good enough. Curvy Scout trying to come onto the T70. We are now in B phase. Some more MGs coming in. Some Nisei rifles for the north, but there's three tanks around here. And there's still a good amount of Ogenia Kani as well. So I don't quite see how that can work out. P51 is around, but not gonna make it. Force and M2 were around, but the M2 got bullied by 52P. Really good counter from Far Drummel for that. Don't want to run with tanks into that. But the 52P beat the M2 in a 1v1 situation, and it's in a 2v1 situation easily. Sherman here trying its best to hold the line, getting some good kills, but still not getting any flags. And getting flags here is the main issue. Second Sherman comes around. O Force hits onto the T34. M4A1 comes around from the side, doesn't get spotted just yet, gets a penetration in. So maybe all the tanks can be killed off and then a counter push needs to happen, but there's really not that much to follow it up with. So the amount of anti-tank luckily is also rather low on Farrah Donald's side right now. That's the one advantage that might be pushable right now for Colonel Koenig. The tanks, the two Shermans need to do some work. Southern flank, ooh, T70 even going deep now here. Stewart's trying to come around but the flag is still not retaking and the 17-7 is going on and this looks like Farrah Donald's push will make it through. Really good aggressive play here with the first Polish so far. Really good combined arms. Always having the right answer to trade more efficiently than Colonel Koenig. And that was some nice play for sure. T34E's coming in as well. T34E in the north has fallen too. So a couple of units here pleading now for Fari Rommel but Colonel Koenig needs to change the situation quickly, and now with less income, that seems to be a rather tough thing to do. Ojni Alkani here getting caught out in the light first by the Nisei Rifles. So Nisei Rifles will win that duel, but Dejan Jolgovis are around, and they should win a 1v1 in Deep Forest with their Molotovs and their PPSHs. So Nisei Rifles need to be really careful. Another T70 comes around. 70 number 2. And that will try to get some support in here, but I'm not sure this is the right territory for a T70. These things really want to use their 1750 meter range, and here that's not the case. Here they would even lose against the T72, or at least against two of them. So not really the most amazing unit there right now. Sherman's still trying to push in, but they would need to push harder than this. 16-8 is still on, and now Paranormal just can throw infantry in the way, in the gears of Colonel Koenig and win with that, and T-34s are on the way again as well. T-34E is a bit slower, but it will take a bit longer to arrive on the front line, but the Shermans here not doing enough. Obviously, way easier for us to say that it's a bit uh, like there, there's a lack of AT, and it is for Colonel Koenig. Colonel Koenig not having the god IQ that we do, but time is of the essence, and it's running out quite quickly. Got the kill onto the armored units in the south. Cavalry scouts working overtime here. Cavalry Scout Battalion number 2 already. The first squad already got decimated early on. So the flag might be retaken here relatively soon. Could maybe even try to get around, but the two, uh, three gun there would be in the way. Maybe to try to get to this flag would be an idea to just stop that double take. But even if it would be stopped now, the time would still be relatively close to running out. And any second it's continues makes it even harder even when a single tick is achieved again 52p here gets killed but the two t-34s now are back in the forest uh, in the town but well, in the north the push of paradromal continues trying to get one more flag maybe a bit over eager here ah t-70 gets grit 
Tactic Pounder though, coming around, will most likely get killed onto the SU-76, but the T-70 falls beforehand. Nisei rifles are around, trying to desperately hold onto the flag. Engineers and converted gunners moving around as well. And Colonel Koenig needs a Hail Mary push now to get to a better flag situation. Needs to stop the 59th lead right now. Nisei rifles of Sherman moving in. Two T-34s moving in here. And so far, the T-34 is not penetrating. But it's two versus one now, and the Sherman ain't penetrating either. T-34s get the kill. Nisei rifles now caught on their own under a lot of heavy fire. Only one Sherman remaining in the center. Six pounder not in position to retaliate on through the T-34s. And this position looks really grim now. Yes, the flag in the south has been retaken, but more reinforcements already in the way to retake it for Paridromal. Paridromal's income advantage still kicking in currently. And we won't see Colonel Koenig's income advantage at all, as B-Face will most likely be the only face we got into in this game. C-Face seems out of reach here for Colonel Koenig, with only 3 minutes 15 on the clock. And this is an impressive game here. Paradormal coming in really hot with a good strategy, good execution, and Colonel Koenig not quite up to stop the Menace with one of the best divisions in the game. Like, it, this was not an easy pushover. This was not a miss pick here, I would say, by Colonel Koenig when it comes to division. Like, Task Force 45 is a good division. No questions asked. It might be the best in the game, still, even after the latest nerfs. But Paradormal found a way of how to play around it. It's small weaknesses. It's light lack, uh, slight lack of infantry AT and so on. And use that really wisely. It's slightly weaker Shermans and all of these things. And on Harashaya, the p capability of dodging 2000 meter range M10s and getting into 1500 meter range fights with T-34s. So, yes, a really strong push here. Really strong performance by Farodomal. With a strong deck as well. Uh, uh, yeah, first Pichotti, one of the A tier divisions as well, currently. Or maybe even S tier as well. P51 trying to hit, kill the IL 2. Not Most likely not able to do it. But the push here is strong. 59 still continuing. Sapergi moving forward. Stralki coming in as well. Converted Garnis here will be pinned down, and then it will even be. Is 16 8, 8 in the end, but only 1 minute 41 remaining. And Colonel Koenig will lose game number one here, and it will be a rather decisive win for Farrell in this first one against an opponent that is anything but a pushover. So, yes, strong showing of the leader of the Foxes in this first game. Pergis coming in from the rear. And all of that without any off-map or any shenanigans like that on, on Harashaya. Just really good trading all around the game. M10 coming in, but not really making a difference anymore. Even close to an 18.6 now. Nisei rifles do their job, pushing back a bit in the north. Trading really well there, but they only come in on B-Face. They and they didn't trade well enough to really s uh, to, to fix the situation completely in the north. At least save the flag over here. Paradromo may be slightly over eager there, but just did want it to end the game there. And keep the pressure up. And in the south, the mortar half tech here doing a really good job. Like, Tom Kodak not playing badly here. It just felt like Paradromo had all the chess pieces aligned perfectly from the get go. And executed it like a real champ as well. And Colonel Koenig just being swept away by this flood of Polish units coming his way. So GGVP, two fire normal in game number one. Not an easy victory here. Like Colonel Koenig still tried to trade and traded pretty decently. Like the trades were not the issue. Just Fire Dommel got into the positions that were needed to get the tick on and stayed in there for the whole game. And that was a really strong show. So, yeah, impressive. Impressive game one.
And yeah. Reef pointing out Macherino and the, the other lovely things that are around this season of League again. We also still have a Fantasy League and you can still sign up today for, with your Fantasy League team today. We will stop the sign up after today. So you can't. Uh, so if you want to get into the Fantasy League, get it in now. Otherwise, people will have too much of an advantage knowing too many results. So today is the last day you can submit a Fantasy team. And if you want to do that, go to this document. You can find the link in the chat. And use your 300 point, uh, million points wisely to buy a good team out of players. You can find the prices of the players over here. And then submit them to either Green AS or me. And we will put you in. And the winner will, first of all, win bragging rights of being the most knowledgeable guy in the Steel Division community and then second of all will win also an honorable role in the discord and also win a small prize in form of a nemesis division a dlc of their choice and all of that by just picking the right guys and letting them do the work so yeah if you want to join our little fantasy league and see if you know the community the best Get your team together now. And then Metroino is around and we are above $100. The first uh, step, the first goal already achieved. So thanks for that. More golds. Now we're closing in on to the $200 goal. The And yep, yeah, you can help out with that without having to pay anything. All you have to do is press the claim code button up here on the Metroino page and that Adds 25 cents to the price pool for free. So especially if you're a player in the league and you want some prize money, just do that and you <laughs> higher your chances of getting some and increase the amount as well. But also if you're a viewer and you want to give some appreciation to these players, that is more than just, oh yeah, thanks guys. Couple of, an easy click without you having to pay anything and they get 25 cents out of it in the end. So... Just click that little button up there on the Metrino page where you can find the link down below or in the chat as well. And then, yeah, let's have a look on to Division 2. I was in the wrong division here. As the group these two players are in is not an easy one either. Flix seems to be one of the favorites of the Fantasy League, for example. So whoever wins this one at least lines up to being in a good position with only four players in each group losing a match is really really decisive and lowers your chances a lot and every map you win gets you a good step closer to the playoffs so colonel koenig kind of needs a map win in game number two to keep the chances in a good position to move on to the playoffs but yeah it's a tough group dark neutron if in shape also always a scary opponent and flicks the opinions around are all Flicks is one of the favorites this season and for sure in the group. So you don't want to go into that with a loss in your bag and having to win against Flicks. It's easier to just go in there with a point and saying, okay, I at least need a draw against Flicks instead of I need a win against him. So let's see how it goes. And let's see if Colonel Koenig can bring it back in game number one or if Pirate Rommel gets himself into the pole position in Group C. We will see that go again. Game number two. And we have an interesting matchup here once more. Though this time it's not divisions that we would all call top tier, but rather some of the mid tier section. But both of them are, and that's a pretty hot one as well, as both also back to Maverick. No shenanigans with divisions that are a bit out of the practice either both back to maverick versus maverick and now the divisions we got are 10th guards tankor and ha group of heart and neck for private rommel and heart and neck is a solid division at the moment i would say as heart and neck has black feelings heart and neck has tigers that got buff and heart and neck has a couple of mg42s that got a bit more ammo as well that can be used so 
got some nice love lately and got already a bit of an availability buff in the patch before. So let's see how hot Hardenek can be here as 10th Guard's tank core also profited from some of the tank division buffs for the Soviets. Obviously the T buff on their tanks and then 50 cal ammo buff on the half tracks are the big two there and they have a solid air tap they have decent infantry for the tank division as well not amazing though but they will come in with some hot pressure here colonel koenig loving his armored and mechanized formations a lot and we'll see how well this one will do also 10th guards has a really scary unit that is called the pe2 but maybe with luck feelings that can be stopped hartenek before that, always had an issue with AA. You also, I think, only have truck-mounted flock feelings, which have a bit lower availability, so if, our, if Colonel Koenig can snipe them, that still m would maybe lead to some issues with the air defense of our normal. So, we'll see how it goes. Off-map, start in the north, though, for fire normal. So, you might see some hot push action here once more. A stew. A martyr, uh, or two martyrs actually even, and a Jagdpanzer. So some nice armored formation coming in, in the north, for fire normal on the other side. Only a T-34 and an SU-85, but supported by some M-42s. And PTRS also pushing in deep, and one SU-557, which can deal with martyrs at least as well, if it penetrates them. And has a chance against Stu's and the Panzer, though there the penetration values are not quite what you would want to have some reliable penetration chances. There some bounces might happen. Meanwhile though, a lot of formations, I guess, to push onto this hill. Maybe to go onto the town, but I feel like this is, yeah, most of it is going onto the hill. So, uh, Colonel Koenig attacking the hill here, Fire Rommel going, I guess, for some off-map start here and Trying to win this lane, which is often the segment of the map where armor engagements happen the most. Later on in the game, some happen here, and then some happen in the town, but this is usually the most common place for some armor engagements. And we'll see how that goes. As that's MGs, pretty cheap MG34s. Yes, they're disheartened, but you get them for 20 points, so they are pretty efficient. You also get quite a lot of them per card. Couple of Prince Grenadiers and two Jarvoks. On the other side, Rajvetkas, Guardias, Tankers Hernikis, and Ognumachikis. And a couple of OBs and Maxims as well to help out in the open. PTRS on the way to get into position. Does it get some snipes here? Unloads. We'll try to get some shots off. Ooh, first Kubel dies. One is at SMG down. And two go down. Pack 40 is out, but a lot of firepower against that and against the Azat SMG. So. I'm not sure if the Pack 40 will achieve anything major here. Has it already got pressed down? It actually does! It gets a kill onto the SU-57. Good kill there for the Pack 40. Will fall, but at least will reduce the amount of armored forces around on the other side quite drastically. Whilst the Marder, Stu and Jagdpanzer take a bit longer to arrive on the front line. Half track here also now used to surrender all these units. Good usage of this by Colonel Koenig. But now the Marder and the Jagdpanzer have arrived, so the half track needs to be careful. Ah, gets sniped. In the middle, we have some Kozaken Granatwerfer 50, which are small, uh, short range 50mm mortar. Not quite as good as the Arm 38, but tries to do its best here as well. Ryder Jaeger and Jaeger Pioneers coming around. There is not able to snipe anything around here. Meanwhile, off map will try to soften up the town, or the, the hill in the north. Well, it's Obi and SU-85 are on the way to try to deal with Fire Dormal's armored units. Jagdpanzer already falling, but so does the SU-85 now. And the Stu should be able to deal with the soft targets. M42 should focus fire onto the Marder. Seems to focus fire uh, to fire onto the Stu though, which is a bit of a waste here. Against the Marders it would have a really good chance of penetration, but it, uh, anti-tank guns, unless micro always focus the heaviest armor value on the other side. So the martyrs get protected by that. Colonel Koenig not up, quite up with the micro. That would be necessary to deal with this. D34 here needs to be really careful. Gets one shot off, disengages. Afterwards, M42 already falling. Next D34 shouldn't get in there too early either. 
Meanwhile, Koenig, Koenig up to a 1410 with the push in the center though. Another 80 mm, uh, 50 mm mortar in the south. Trying to get some hits in. Not really on target though. Rather stressing out their own fragile rocks here maybe a bit. That's the Galia's tried to hold the line. But two fragile rocks are pretty capable in dealing out damage. Right there, Jaegers and two fragile rocks now also engaging the Ognomachiki. And they should go down relatively quickly there as well. And it's back to a 12-12, with the second off map now being called in, in the north. Another M42 coming in, another SU-85. Colonel Koenig really wants to deal with this martyr, set up around here. Whilst a couple of Guardias and Saperis push in onto the hill, and the Rite Jaegers and Jäger Pioneers most likely won't be able to hold this off, especially if the halfback gets involved. Thanks for the follow, Lieutenant926. Hope you're having a good time with this really tense game. So far, both sides with some nice moves. And I do like Colonel Koenig's position at the moment quite a bit. Like, currently winning the hill, not losing in the north just yet. Though losing the T-34 here would be quite annoying. Like, you kind of want to have all tanks around that are possible. Ah, Maxime getting hit. And Faragon was setting up for a good push here. Southern situation. Bit better for Flurry Drummel. Bit more forces around here. T34 coming around though to bring in some good armor support on Colonel Koenig's side. And they would be the biggest gun around for now. Couple of VK9s, which are pretty much Panzer 2s from the capabilities when it comes to armor and 20mm firepower coming around here. And they can be pretty supportive in the center, as there's not too much that can deal with them there just yet. T-34 could maybe move over, but the Marder and the Stu will most likely try to prevent that. So, Colonel Koenig has to set up a position where this can be crushed. But with two su 85s an M42 and two T-34s, that could be something that can be done. Rajvetka also around here with Bazooka can deal with this if it gets too close. So far, Dromel has to be careful, is careful there, which is good. Not eating that bazooka shot. But another T-34 comes around already. SU-85 using its HE shells against some pants grenadiers that tried to bully a Maxime. Another 50mm mortar coming around. 50mm mortar around here, trying to hit on the hill, not really hitting anything there yet. 1410 for Farah Dromel. More Azad's MGs coming in from the rear. Marder 1. In a duel with an M42. M42 has good penetration values there. As the Marder basically has no armor. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> and gets the kill there. So first armored unit of our Dromel here falls. Reinforcements on the way though. Stuck and Stu already in. Both sides bringing in a lot of mid-level armor. And that can be interesting. Panther on the side of Colonel Koenig. That is good against Stooks and against Stoos. Not so much against the Marder, so the second Marder should be killed off as well. And then I, this Panther can most likely go Rampage. But the M42 maybe needs to get one more shot off or two more shots off. Now gets bullied by the Stu and the Marder though. And gets killed off here. Fresh Red Guys get the kill on one of the VKs, I think. Half track falls though. And the Jäger Pioneers and right there Jäger MP44 pushing in deeply. Spadetruppen engaging onto Guardias here as well. SU-85 trying to hit the Spadetruppen on the hill. Oh no, trying to hit the Stuck, but who is on the edge and he's not gonna shoot there as it can't bring its gun down enough, not having enough gun depression. SU-85 now in the firefight versus the Marder. It's also not a good matchup for the SU-85. Will Colonel Koenig lose both the SU-85s? No. But one down, one penetrated is not a good start for the armor engagement to come here. And Fire Normal in with a lot of infantry to try to push on this hill. As the center here, the center of the north in lockdown, this road junction. And also pushing off Colonel Koenig off this hill at the moment. So Colonel Koenig, under pressure, needs to get some good moves in again. 
Panther moving up. Will engage onto the Martyr. Will get a penetration. Martyr does miss. S85 now coming up as well. Maybe should have followed up a bit quicker. Bounce onto the Panther. Kill onto the Martyr. And Jagdpanzer is around as well though. That should be the next target. As it can be dangerous as well. <laughs> Kills the S85. Panther still around. Good focus fire there by Farad Rommel though. Focusing the SU-85 down. And Panther keeps on missing. It's a zero veterancy Panther. Which is a bit of a problem for it. That means its accuracy is not as amazing as it could be. Stuck coming around here. Rajvetka on the edge of the hill. Maybe can get an ambush onto a Stuck later. Ah, no. Cannot refer. Find it and will try to kill it. With some nice mortar fire. Colonel Koenig trying to dodge it. That's a T-34. is moving forward here. Keeping these infantry from the hill. So the Panther move was important. But these tanks can't support this infantry anymore against the T-34s. But Stuck number 2 comes around. And T-34 actually gets a penetration in. But most likely will go down before it can do any more damage. So a bit of an interesting position here now for both players. T-34 a bit too far forward now. Needs to run again. Stu and Jagdpanzer uh, Pan trying to kill it. Stu will miss, Jagdpanzer not able to aim on top of it. Panther moves a bit forward, moves out of the off-map. Is now in a fight against the Stu and the Jagdpanzer again. Jagdpanzer gets a shot in. And Panther gets the penetration. Other tanks bounces. T-34 gets a lot of surrenders. Stuk 3 is coming around though. Jagdpanzer falls. Panther here in a good position. T-34 though. Will it get a good shot onto the Stuck? Gets the kill! Second penetration there. Okay. Important kill there as well. Colonel Koenig at the moment down on a 9.15. Paradormal has the double tick. So Colonel Koenig will need to capture some territory again. But this flag should fall relatively quickly. And some important kills lately. Pack 40 coming up though to hunt down the Panther. Two of them on the hill. OB-25 could help out against that. T-34 on this hill still an important unit as well. Stu is around as well though. So that would be an interesting matchup against the T-34. And more OBs and SU-25s, uh, SU-57s coming in. SU-25 is a bit of a different thing. Sorry, the 10 feelings kicked in there. The first flock feeling on vehicle basis comes in. The first self-propelled flock feeling on an unarmored SDKFZ. And some mortars or Power normal as well. Radio mortars with more accuracy as well. T-34 and Panther in a good position. But the Pack 40 is on the hill. And now we'll get some shots onto the Panther. And Pack 40 is capable of dealing with that relatively well. So the Panther has to get out of there. It's not doing so just yet. And it goes down. Kill on the Panther is a bloody good one. Next Panther coming in to replace it, but the Pack 40 position up here is nasty. T-34 needs to disengage. Stu got penetrated once at least. OB-25, as it said, in a good spot to hit the Pack 40s if they come up on the hill. So this position is nice for Colonel Koenig, but it comes in a bit too late. Pack 40 though, most likely will bite the dust here before it can get it off another shot. So at least revenge has been taken here. 59 once more though for Fabi Rommel. Colonel Koenig under pressure here. Needs to get more done. So far, no air support from Colonel Koenig, which is interesting. Something that he usually always does. Laughs fighter bombers and quick bombers like P2s or um, Marauders. Stu, 42 in the north. Holding the line down here. Killing off some infantry. OB-25 still. Pretty helpful in general for Colonel Koenig. Infantry of Farid almost should retreat again. Most likely won't make it over the open without at least taking heavy damage and most likely most of them getting pinned down as the OB-25 is in a good spot as well together with the T-34s and the SU-57. So a lot of damage taken here on the infantry by Farid Rommel without really achieving much. Even if the other hill might be reached, the Saperi and the Tanko and Nikis most likely will deal too much damage. Jagdpanzer is coming around. We'll try to get a kill onto the half-track here. Not doing so just yet. 
I think it hit it with its, its APCR shell. And the half track is moving back. One Hujarok gets bullied heavily. The other Hujarok and Panzer Grenadiers actually might make it. Half track and SU 57 is moving around. Not sure. 1v1 between SU 57 and Yak Panzer is an interesting one. Yak Panther is still using the wrong ammo. But two penetrations with the APCR shell still enough to get the kill there. As the crit of the SU 57 wasn't good enough. T 3045 though. And it's a 1944 model coming around. And that could help. Second Pike 40 though is still there. Is still scary. Infantry up here got the flag for a second. Got a 59 but now gets pinned down. As I said, this push not really worthwhile. Or Faradomal throwing away a bit of his good Hungarian infantry. Meanwhile in the south. Faradomal on the push slightly. Killing off a bit of infantry off Colonel Koenig. Forcing Colonel Koenig to invest a bit more. But... The tank advantage here is down to Colonel Koenig as there is no armor left on the side of Faro Rommel. The small little VK-9 got killed off and the T-3476 is still standing strong. Bit of AA coming in for Faro Rommel to prevent any easy bombing attacks, any strafing runs. Whilst the Panther A now has to face a Tiger E around here. T-3485 also had that duel in ahead of it. Already got penetrated here once. Panther in a duel against the Tiger is pretty strong. T-345 has a bit of an issue, but if you do a 2v1, the Tiger doesn't stand a chance. Question is if Colonel Koenig can force that. As far Domel is back to a 13-11 here. Keeps on the pressure. Might be a bit over eager down though. Half track. Engaging the right Jaegers here, forcing them back. But good reaction there by Faradomel getting them out of there before they can get surrendered or anything like that. Martyrs, good support for the Tiger. Tiger plus Martyrs can be really scary for the Panthers and the T-34. 85. Good combined arms here out of Harry Rommel so far. And it's four Martyrs on the battlefield. As we are still in B phase where both players have the highest income. Both playing Maverick income. And they are at 170 points throughout the second 10 minute phase of the game but with minute 20 their income will plummet into the C phase income of 80 points only so at that stage losses taken can't really be replaced anymore so everything that is on the battlefield at 20 minute mark will most likely be the decisive factor who has an advantage at the 20 minute mark will have a huge advantage for the rest of the game and it's snowball potential at that stage often is pretty strong. P2 here coming in to try to deal with Pack 40. IL-237 trying to hunt down the Tiger. Luck feeling is around. P2 gets its bombs off dropped anyway. Will get hit by the flag feeling but the IL-237 can go through without getting hit for that reason. But the two martyrs are still around here. And another flag feeling comes around so the IL-237 most likely will bite the dust. Yes it goes down. P2 will make it out. E109 gets hit by a 2 7 37mm as well. Only flag feelings slightly overpowered. Mother not hitting. But neither is the T3045 and two mothers are around now. So the T3045 will bite the dust in the end. Tiger under fire by the pan for now. But T3045 falling there is big. Can the panther get the kill onto the tiger? No, it can't! Oh my god, this panther of Colonel Koenig is, must be frustrating. So many misses already with it. I mean, it still has 40% accuracy, so it shouldn't be that terrible. Gets one of the martyrs, but martyrs also really dangerous on this range against it. Two more martyrs coming around in the rear. And the martyrs have the higher rate of fire here, and it gets the bailout. You don't want to fight a martyr on this range in the CQC, uh, in the 1v1 with the panther. Martyrs easily killed by anti-tank guns, but... They also have the penetration power against all the big tonks out there. And this panther goes down and that is brutal for Colonel Koenix. His two big tonks got slaughtered there. And he didn't even get the tiger. And this position now is really rough. Losing the IL-237. I would say the better target for the IL-237 would have been to kill the two martyrs. And then 2v1 the tiger. As also the IL-237 often doesn't penetrate the tiger from the front. 
as it doesn't quite have the penetration power for that. But in Smartest, obviously, every hit of a IL-237 is a, is a penetration. So, in hindsight, that might have been the better play. But hindsight is 2020 or something like that. And it didn't happen that way. So now Colonel Koenig has to live with having to play from a relatively tough position. At least still two minutes of good income to replace the losses somewhat. And maybe try to get some good trades on some more tanks around here. But the tiger martyr combo is really strong here. M42 engaging onto the martyr 1. And that martyr 1 is in trouble. Kill onto the M42. Another T3485 comes around. 82mm mortar smoke coming around. OB25 goes down here. Another T3476 moving up onto the hill. And VK9 hitting the Rajavetka. Killing it off. Mother 1 on the hill. 1410 for Farid Rommel. ME 410 coming around. Marder A gets another pin here. Marder's overall really amazing tanks, tank destroyers. You really don't want to engage Marder's in 1v1s with tanks often. You usually want to deal with them with other means. As they don't deal well with anti tank guns at all, they don't have MGs. Their HE shells are mediocre and they have really lackluster armor, uh, armor. So yeah, M42s, for example, they can get in range of a martyr, they slaughter them. But in 1v1s versus tank fights, martyrs are pretty good, as they usually get the first shot. And they can survive a bit of damage as well. And once they're on target, they slaughter most armor, because they can penetrate most things with their Pack 40 gun. Tiger E here in the rear. Still around, and that's really the other big problem here. Now T-345s won't win that 1v1 duel either. Mortar's trying to help out with it, but it won't be easy. So Colonel Koenig kinda needs it, as it's now 59 4 fire normal once more. And another T-34 bites the dust against Martyrs. M42 is not quite in position yet, should have waited for that. T-34 over here takes too long to get a shot off, and T-34, 76s also always have a bit of an issue with getting good shots in. Martyrs having the accuracy advantage there as well, with the AP shell as well, with 50% accuracy. And this doesn't look hot for, Far for uh, Colonel Koenig anymore. Farrah Rommel with a really good combined arms here. Mortars not getting a kill onto the Tiger, not getting my- Oh! Oh god, I, I'm sorry Farrah Rommel. <laughs> the caster curse hitting hard there. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it strikes again. T3485 heading the Azat Simchi. Okay, so Tiger at least falls. So two T3485s around against two martyrs. With two more martyrs coming in. Hill battle over here could be pretty close thing. Mortar fire on this position obviously would be amazing. Trying to kill off the AA. If the AA gets killed off, Colonel Koenig can win the long run with better air. If those two flag feelings go down, the AA off Farad Normal will be absolutely horrendous. Currently P2 is being used in the south though. No AA here to support them, no fighters to support them, and the P2 bites the dust. Uh, P39 somehow flying home. The F109 gets the kill there. Not quite sure what that happened there, but bad air micro it seems from Colonel Koenig. Losing a P2 there, and that's really rough. You can't afford to lose that. That's one of your aces that you have to try to get this game back in your direction. It's still 28 minutes till the 50 minute time limit, but you first of all have to stop the bleeding here. And that won't be an easy task. Martyrs on the hill. Mortars out of HE shells. And affording a supply truck right now for them is quite expensive. And that's half of a minute of income. ME410 coming around to try to bully the T34. ME410 recon planes to ensure that you can hit it. Uh, the ME410 only bouncing there. Not quite getting the kill. 
Retrovetka coming around. T3045 once more falling to Martyrs down here, it seems. Martyrs getting another good victory there. And really carrying the game here right now for Fairy Drummond. Really carrying the game. T39 not capable of shooting down an ME410. Should have maybe focused fired on this one with the AA as well. And uh, nope, teleports out. T39 flying back too. Maybe for 10 trying to come in once more. Not on target at all though. A bit of a bad idea. Turns to the right side at least. Seems. Yeah, we would have turned right. Would have been killed by the 37 millimeter. Turning left was the right side there. Thank you to Saniki getting eaten by Pusha Goliorsk. And this is not looking hot at all for Colonel Koenig anymore. Too many losses sustained, not enough damage lately, and the double martyr combi killing all of the tanks, having always the perfect penetration uh, uh, values to just deal with it. And yeah, here we go, another martyr combo. Well, not on target just yet, but T345 only getting killed in now. Martyr with a couple of bounces on this range, not quite the perfect range to engage at T345 here. This time might work out. Still, next, another penetration here. Can it secure the kill onto the Martyr? Nope. And the Martyr gets another shot and gets the kill. So in the end, still a good trade as Martyrs are only 50 points. The 34, 85 are 120 points. No, oh, no, 110 points, but still more than double. So, worthwhile trade in the end after all. And this is now again a 59 for Fire Normal. And it seems like Fire Normal is on a good way to secure a 2-0 victory here over Colonel Koenig in the first game of Group C in Division 2. Bombs coming in everywhere. Cancer Gladiators getting some good hits. A hitting the P2. 14-10 going on. Martyr sitting around here. Panzer 3N will come up on the hill. BK901 pushing up to the top as well. A couple more Jäger Pioneers will try to rush this position. Whilst Colonel Koenig will try to hold on for dear life. At least reduces it to a one tick. But there's just so much more combined arms around the map for Fairy Rommel. Tank of <laughs> There's only one tank at the moment for Colonel Koenig. That one tries its best now at 2000 meter range. HE really effective against Maris as well, as they are open top, lightly armored vehicle. So if you can hit them from 2000 meter with HE, you can kill them off relatively well as well. But you need to hit them. L237 coming in now to try to deal with the Maris. Maris already retaliating now. And the SU-122 not having the best armor set up. Ooh. Both Maris fall, but SU-122 gets penetrated once. SU-122 gets another shot onto the Panzer and not getting the kill though. AA got killed off over here, so the IL-237 has no protection, gets killed off as well. And in the end, Colonel Koenig just not getting the good trades that he needs to get the comeback going here. SU-122 now being run down by the ME-410. The snowball has been too big. We are in C phase. Income for Colonel Koenig can't replace losses at all anymore. And Fairy Rommel on the way to victory here. SU-122 over here now gets hunted down by a ME-410. Gets killed off. That <laughs> leaves everything armored related down to only one P-3476 currently for Colonel Koenig. Versus still a martyr, two Panzer three ends. A VK and another heavy amount of infantry, especially in the south now, as the south is about to collapse for Colonel Koenig as well. And there's not much to allow for a counter push in the north either. Infantry advantage here for Fire Normal as well. Air advantage for a while now, too. And this P39 even might bite the dust under the 20mm AA fire. Not quite, but will take a while to come around and. That time is not left on Colonel Connect's blocks to allow for that. OB25 moving up here. Kansas 3 and most likely will deal easily with the South Jack after trying to disengage. But only 43 seconds remaining. And this game is kinda over. This game is 
pretty over here. Artillery hitting in the north, onto some Gadias, and Colonel Kodak surrenders. GG, VP. Really well played. Once more, this time from both sides for sure, but Farrah with the better setup for the tank fights, achieving a 2 to 0 victory here over Colonel Koenig. Really impressive play and showing us the strengths of Hardenek. That combined arms is what makes Hardenek and 14th Infantry Myers a really nice setup. Like you have all the tools of the German tech tree in your hands, basically. And yeah, you can use them to really effective measures to counter T3485s and Panthers here. And with those advantages, the infantry was able to get into good position as well, which is not weak in Hartenegg either. So GGVP here to our player from Iran. 2-0 two -two victory for uh, Faridomal. Colonel Kodak has to step it up to keep the chances of advancing to the playoffs alive. Needs basically two wins now. And also obviously wants to avoid demotion. So has to get some victories against uh, Flicks uh, or against Black Newton at least, and that will be interesting. That will be pretty interesting. GGVP. So, we have one more series coming up. As I just saw that they just finished, and we will go into Colonel Koenig versus Homer. That is another Division 2 series. Uh, hey, Robert versus Homer. That should be pretty hot as well. As they are in the group of death, in group A of Division 2. Oh, uh, the wrong folder. And there, you can't allow to lose any map, basically. We have Homer, we have Fair Robert, we have El Bowser, and we have Luna in that group. And every map you drop there makes it so much harder to have chances to moving on. So, we'll see how this goes for these two players. Yes. Homer and Tara Robert, for sure, a bit unconventional players in their playstyle. Though I would say they have somewhat similar playstyles in how they behave, so I wonder how this will play out. And, yeah, I wonder if Homer stands a chance in this group of absolute veterans. Homer's first season, but Homer in league, but has played in some tournaments pretty well, has played a lot of ranked, so knows how to play the game for sure. Question is, is he up for the league experience? And we will see that in a second. So don't run away, one more cast coming up. 